today is um, a full month now that my mother has been gone and just yesterday was a full month that I had seen her alive. In January 11th, she was here with me, Michael, and my dad, except for Michael for a little bit, was at work, but he did want to get off early that day. So I'm thankful that he did that. So he got to spend some extra time with both my parents before everything. Uh, af right after everything had happened, um, I took a few days, but I did finally shower, but I didn't bother washing my hair. And the reason for that is because the day I had them over, um, both Michael and my mom had this thing where if they smelt something really nice on me, they both would go a little bit crazy and start sniffing away. And one time my mom did that with my hair. And I was so proud that I had found a shampoo that not only smelt really good, but also, so for whatever reason, now with every kind of shampoo I would try, it always left me with a burnt smell in my hair. I don't know why. I'm thinking maybe it had something to do with the fact that I, I myself think I have a little bit of a hormone imbalance. <clears throat> so when I tried this shampoo, I loved that it not only smelled really good, but the first thing I did was smell my hair to see if it was going to give me that same smell, and it didn't. So I had it in a little ponytail. I undid it and I showed my mom and I said, here mom, you're going to want to smell this. It smells so good. It smells so good. I found a new shampoo. Maybe even you can give it a try because my mother had became or become so allergic, became allergic to a lot of stuff. She needed to use medicated shampoo and she, she didn't like that because she felt like everything that she wanted to or that she could use didn't have enough of a scent to it or she always felt like she just didn't smell clean and she always did but she herself in her mind felt like it she was just never clean enough because the stuff she had to use wasn't strong enough or smelt strong enough and anyway so because of that I told myself that yeah sure you have your days where you don't you take showers but you don't wash your hair like that was something I always did I never washed my hair every day my hair was only every once in a while and it kept it healthy that way so I liked doing it that way and for the longest time I didn't want to wash whatever remaining thing physically of my mom that I had on me so I said, okay, I'll take a shower, but I'm not washing my hair. And it was pretty much already time again already for me to wash my hair. And I just, I didn't want to. So today, knowing that it had been a full month, I said, I thought to myself, you know what? <laughs> Your mom would be like, mija, don't be cochina. You take a shower, you know, because my mother always liked being clean. She always showered every morning and... She showered from head to toe every single morning. And I could hear her in my head, don't be nasty, take a shower, wash your hair, it's okay. So, but it was, even something as simple as that was really tough and a hard task for me. Piper, off the sofa. Come on, you know better. Off the sofa. Off. Thank you. You can be up here if you're not going to be bitey. Andale, off. Off. Off the sofa. Off. Get off. You know better. <laughs> Just when I say, I always say, you're allowed up here if you're going to have a toy. And you always bring me a toy after you've been bitey. <laughs> Ooh. Can I give you butterfly kiss? Butterfly kiss. Ow, I didn't need a nose bob. Okay, ready? Go get it. Oh, sorry, baby. Good boy. So, yeah. 
And I, I didn't want to really just mention that. I also wanted to mention how briefly how oh, baby no biting yes you can kissy that's fine get your toy good boy get your toy what do you see yourself look there you are again piper look there's you <laughs> Oh, sorry. New day, same old story <laughs> with the dogs. <laughs> Except for now, it's just Piper. Because as I was trying to say a little bit, no, uh-uh, you need to get off the sofa. No biting. Off. Nope. Go get your toy. Off. Um, so, we had a lot going on in the year 2022 basically from the year 2021 to the year 2022 we had some things happen with rock where uh he needed to get a lot of his teeth removed and we were really worried about him being under anesthesia for a very long time but um the vet did what they could to take away his teeth. We did what we could to make sure he was still gonna be able to eat, how he could eat for the few days that his mouth was gonna be sore. And a little bit from that, in the year 2022, we had to move. My parents helped us with that. So we're in a, a new apartment now. We're no longer in the ones we used to be in. So Rock was 10 in the year 2022 and Roxy was 13. Uh, both I still see, just like with my mom too, all three of them the day of as if it just happened yesterday. Uh, my husband and I at the time, he was just my boyfriend. We thought that an issue that started to occur with Rock might have been because of the anesthesia. We don't know. We're not 100% sure, but we think it was because of that. He started to develop convulsions. So we had him on a pill that he had to take. It was either every twice a day or every three times a day I honestly don't remember because it was such a long time ago even though like I said it feels like I'm talking about the day of baby that's enough don't be licking off mommy's lotion <clears throat> um oh, I'm sorry I keep saying I'm um, a lot He started getting convulsions and he needed to take medicine at least two to three times a day and it spread out from a good few hours off the sofa. No, off. You need to get off the sofa. You're being a bad boy. Go get your toy. Uh, yeah, he needed to do that. At first, we said, let's not. Yeah, I remember now. It was two at first. So I was so worried with the whole thing that had happened that maybe the medicine wouldn't be okay. And they did say that it was a, oh, oh, excuse me. They did say that it was a really high dose. So Michael and I agreed that we were only going to give it to him twice a day. <clears throat> we were only going to give it to him twice a day to see how it would be. Everything was going okay until one day he had a super long convulsion and... Um, see, the thing with those, though, is that it was always so weird. After he'd have a convulsion, he'd be okay, except for he'd get super thirsty and super hungry. And he'd act like he was just a fresh little puppy again, wanting to play, wanting to do this and that with us. It's really cute things. And anyway, that's exactly what happened that day. However, it started up again. Except for his little face wouldn't stop shaking while he was awake. He was aware. 
And I told Michael too, I said, I don't think it's over yet because he won't stop. His little face won't stop like twitch shaking. And sure enough, it happened again. So I said, okay, we'll do three because ugh, no, bad boy, off. <clears throat> I said, obviously the three are gonna work better. And for a good while, it was. Until one day, we woke up kind of late and my mother did tell us, you know, you don't have to come right away. Come when you want to. I had been helping my mom with paying off her pawn shop tickets. And this particular Friday, uh, yeah, it was either a Friday, yeah, because I would get paid on Friday. So I have to tell her, even though they would get paid on Thursdays, I always had to tell her she had to wait for Friday for me to get my check. <clears throat> Good boy. So um, we waited for my check. <clears throat> and she had texted or even um, spoke to me about how Piper off the sofa you know better you're getting too bitey <sighs> boo you see yourself see yourself <laughs> no uh uh off the sofa off Get that beautiful boy. Oh. Mm -mm. You need to get off the sofa. Off. Off the sofa. Off. Go on, get off. Off the sofa, Piper. Off. <clears throat> oh. Oh, oh, you okay? Oh, baby. You're okay. You're okay. Silly boy. No, nothing came out of you. You're fine. Off the sofa, though. If you're going to keep being bitey. If you're not, no. Uh-uh. Off. No, off the sofa, baby. Off. Oh, go on. Get off. There you go. Thank you. play tricks he likes to play tricks of he'll bring up a toy act like he's not gonna want to bite me because he's playing with his toy and then out of nowhere I'll start getting bites <clears throat> which is fine he's just a puppy well he's a year old but a puppy um so yeah that um as I was mentioning before so sorry um <clears throat> uh he she said it was perfectly fine to come a little late and I had told Michael I said we might as well just bring rock and Roxy or just rock because no off the sofa off um, we need to bring him because we were we had got started to get up so late that day that it was pretty much already gonna be time for him to take his medicine so I, I kind of begged Michael please we need to take him because and through the night, I myself had not been feeling well. So I hadn't been feeling well myself either. <clears throat> and Michael just wanted to get it done. He was like, we're going to go. We're going to get it done super quick. And we're going to come right back. But I kept telling him, no, we need to bring Rock with us. Because it was literally only going to be like an hour left before he needed to take his medicine. And that was something we did. If we knew we were going to be out, then we'd just bring Rock with us so that we can make sure to take or give him his medicine off. No, off the sofa. You know better. Again with a toy. Don't bring up your toys if you're not going to play, baby. <laughs> Anyhow, so I was frustrated because Michael kept saying no. And I was like, okay, fine. So, and then that day, my mother was telling me about how she was going to need to do grocery shopping as well. And this kind of frustrated Michael a little bit because he was like, he just wanted to get me back home. He wanted to get Michael back, mm, Rock back home. So I was like, you know, just be nice, you know, please for me because I'm not feeling well and I don't need this. So he was like, okay. So we finally, and I tell him I need to do this because this was the last bit of pawn shop tickets that needed to be paid off. Paid off for her to get her stuff back and for it to be okay. Mm. 
Okay, baby, give me a second. <sighs> One second, sorry. I threw his toy and I think it landed somewhere. It shouldn't have. <clears throat> oh, it did. I'm sorry, baby. <clears throat> okay, there you go. <sighs> so, she was telling me she needed gro to do grocery shopping. And so I told her that that was fine but that I would either have Michael go in and I would have Michael go in with her to the pawn shop as well because since I wasn't feeling so well I needed to stay put where I was so that I didn't <clears throat> get myself more sick and you know she didn't really like that too much but she understood and was like okay it was going to be Mother's Day soon this was in May back in 2022 so she wanted to do grocery shopping as well as find some things for mothers in her life <clears throat> as well as me because not only was I a dog parent, am a dog parent, I was also a mother once, uh, very briefly had, almost had a baby but it was a miscarriage and she always like, you know, remembered that and always felt like I was still a mother no matter what. So she wanted to find something for me as well. And she also wanted to find something for me to maybe eat because she thought maybe it was just something of, maybe I was hungry. Nope, baby, <sighs> off the sofa. Even though it was more of the sickness I had was where I couldn't really keep anything in. So, you know, Michael still frustrated, off the sofa, upset that we're not home yet. I'm upset that I told him in the first place to bring rock. And anyway, um, I just keep thinking in my head, he's going to be okay, he's going to be okay. I'm telling Michael, he's going to be okay, he's going to be okay. And I'm thinking to myself, he's going to be okay. So we finally get done, take my mom home. She's happy with her groceries and the pawn shop stuff. Michael says, well, you know what? Let's make a stop somewhere else real quick. And I say, okay, but please, let's be super quick because we need to get home. We need to get the baby his medicine so everything can be okay. Okay. And then from there, we can take Rock and Roxy out, do a little stroll around the apartments, <clears throat> and then come back home and call it a day. Around this time, I was already feeling much better. Um, my mom had bought some tamales and some uh, crackers. She gave them to me, and that actually made me feel a lot better for whatever weird reason. You would think tamales, that's kind of like, you know, when you're sick in that way, the first thing you're not going to want is something a little fatty. But <clears throat> it helped because I did only have like one and then another and then some of my crackers, and that helped a lot as well as a drink. <clears throat> and anyway, so we finally get home. Um, Michael, it's already super late. Michael is putting me in bed and I hear something like out from where I'm at and he tells me that he did have a convulsion seizure. And I said, okay, you know, sorry. And he thought to himself that he wanted to lower the AC because after that it made rock soup. No, you need to get off the sofa. Off. No, stay off. You're being a bad boy. No biting. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Off the sofa. Thank you. And uh, it made him super hot. I needed to help him get in the bed okay. Michael noticed that he just laid down. And when he laid down, he had his head kind of tilted over the bed frame. And, you know, I thought that was super cute and thought that maybe he was just super sleepy. But Michael, that's when Michael had told me, no, it's because he had a convulsion. So he's kind of like in and out of it right now and I said okay I felt him he was super hot I wanted to tell Mike you know get him an ice or something or let's you know like have some way we can get him cooled down you know we kind of just leave it as is and then the next day or even still I guess that day you could say well yeah the next day because you know the next day comes like in the middle of the night he starts having a convulsion again only this time, it doesn't want to go away. The convulsion doesn't want to go away. 
keeps having it all morning. So I tell Michael, we need to take him to the vet. And the first place we think of is the first place where we had been setting up appointments for them. They tell us, we're not an actual like clinic clinic, like emergency clinic. You need to go to this place instead. So we're like, they try to put something in him to kind of calm him down. He gets some rest a little bit, but he still just won't stop with the convulsion. So Michael and I make the very hard decision to make him stop this pain or to help him not have this pain he's having anymore with the convulsions. I right away cry and tell Michael I don't want to be here for that. Said, I'm gonna be in the car because I can't deal with that I can't I can't see that so he says okay baby I understand so I give Rock his goodbyes and I tell him that I'm so sorry that I let him go through it for so long and at first when I'm in the car I get so tempted to want to rush inside and say don't do it don't do it or even text Michael but I see that he had left his phone in the car and then I see him coming out out and I think, okay it's too late it's too late our baby is put down already and that was that that was that for our precious baby boy rock and uh, the sad part, the like, worst part of it is that in just one month, he was going to be 11 years old. And I was so happy that he at least made it past being eight. Because if you look it up, boxers, they don't really have a, a very long lifespan. But I thought that maybe... Rock would make it to a decent age because my husband's parents, they had at least two boxers that had been able to make it to like 16 years old. So I thought maybe it could be Rock too, but then he started having these convulsions and that was that. And then, oddly enough, it was the same thing for Roxy. She was doing great. Mind you, little Chihuahua, already 13 years old. Again, one month, just one month away from her being 14 years old. Now hers is a little different. Same thing, she was Again, I had been out with my parents. So my mom was having one of her things of where she was feeling super lonely. So I said, you know what, I'll spend a little bit of time with you and dad. So let's go to his job, have lunch with him. And then from there, when we're heading to y'all's apartment, instead of going with you, <clears throat> I'll head home. So everything gets said and done. We have dinner too at my dad's job. We say, okay, we can leave now. I leave and I come home. And it's so weird because when I would come home, Roxy would already be right there at my legs, you know, um, jumping up and down like, hey, you know, I'm so glad to see you home. And I'd grab her and say hello, let her give me a little bit of kisses. And I'd give her kisses back in return. But this day, I had to find her because she wouldn't come out of where she was. I looked all over the apartment and we have this long, um, well, I have this long body pillow that I keep on the floor by the sofa. And the reason why I do that is because even in the old apartment when I had it, Roxy liked to lay on that. If she wasn't laying on her pillow bed that we had got for her brother Rock, she would be on my body pillow 
And so I said, well, let me check there. And at first I didn't see her. So I started shouting, Roxy, Roxy, where are you? And then finally I looked down and there she is, but she's not jumping up and down. She's not wagging her little tail like crazy like she always did. Her eyes are like, yeah, they're just not okay. I said, baby, are you okay? <laughs> Sorry, I said, when I said that, Piper looked at me like, are you talking to me? <laughs> And so I carried her up, did the usual, hugged her, gave her a lot of kisses. She didn't give me a single one. Then I looked around the apartment and I had noticed that she had accidentally gone to the bathroom a few times. Now, mind you, our dogs were very well potty trained. <clears throat> so this was very out of character. And... I had noticed that she was very sickly. I wanted to take her outside, but she was barely moving. She had trouble coming up and down the stairs. And so I had texted Mike like, hey, you know, right before you left work, was everything okay with Ro Roxy? And he said, yeah, she was fine, why? And I said, well, cause she's really sicky right now. And once again, for whatever reason, I started to get that same kind of sickness I did too the day before with Rock. So both her and I were in the same boat. We were just like, she would go to the bathroom on accident here and there, or she would be throwing up just not the best at all. And then the next day came. I was supposed to go to work because I had been working for my mom then. But I texted her and said, listen, I'm not feeling well. Roxy's not feeling well. I need to be here for her. She understood and she said, okay, Miha, please take care of your baby and make sure you two are okay. And I'll see you again the next time. <clears throat> and well, because I hadn't been feeling too good myself, Michael had made me a chicken soup, a chicken noodle soup. But I told him I wasn't going to eat it until I felt okay enough to. Piper, baby, don't mess with that. Leave that, okay? <clears throat> so, uh, she's doing the same thing that she was doing the previous day. Oh, excuse me. Throwing up. Going to the bathroom. And I would tell her, it's okay, baby. I know you can't help it. I know. It's fine. Cleaned up every single time. And um, I had wanted to, because I had every once in a while, would give them food. <clears throat> Not a lot of the time, but I would every once in a while give them something that I would have. And I thought to myself, oh, she'll like the chicken. So I had her with me on the sofa when I was eating a little bit. And I would have her sniff it to see if she'd take it. Cause she'd always, both her and Rock would always take food. She wouldn't open up her mouth. She'd just move her little nose around, sniffing it. That's all she would do. And then I had to leave her for a tiny bit because I needed to go do something. And when I came back, her little head was tilted in a weird position, so I tried to put it back right. And then she too started having a little seizure. She had such a bad seizure and made her go to the bathroom all over the sofa, all over herself. So I text Michael, hey, where did you put our doggy wipes? And he says where he puts them. So I grab those, grab a towel, wipe her off, clean her off really as good as I can, wrap her up tightly in a towel, start holding on to her. And just letting her know it's okay, it's okay. And at this point, she was <clears throat> having her seizure. But, you know, she was panting, having her seizure. She was alive. But her body had become already where 
And she couldn't move. She couldn't move on her own. She couldn't open up her mouth on her own. Her eyes were just dazed. Sorry about that. <clears throat> and so I say, you know what? She's kind of feeling cold but hot at the same time. I had her... <clears throat> I had her on my... in my arms. I had her in my arms. And I'm thinking to myself, you want water? You know, baby, let me get you some Wawa. So, I, yes, I know you too want water, baby. <laughs> <clears throat> so I get a thing of water for her. Obviously, she can't. No, off the sofa. You're a little too bitey today, baby. And have her in my arms. She's having a seizure. She finally gets done with her seizure, but her tongue <clears throat> is stuck out. So I offer the water to her. She doesn't take it. I say, okay, so I get some. Like, you just put some on her tongue, but it just rolls down onto my arm. She does this big, oh, one second, sorry. Very sorry, but as I was saying in the last video, <clears throat> I was about to say, she took a really deep breath, kind of like a sigh of relief. And then she stopped breathing. So I kept her held in my arms and I couldn't believe it. I kept going to the bathroom to look in the mirror. It's okay, baby, to look in the mirror so I could see her eyes because even though she was gone, her eyes had stayed open. So I kept looking in the mirror saying, hey, look, Mia, look, who's that, that beautiful girl? You know, just hoping that it wasn't true, that I didn't have her now, life was playing in my house. You need to get off the sofa. You're getting too bitey again. But no, she was gone. So, she died in my arms. And again, just like with Rock, she was going to have her birthday in one month. She had passed away in September of the year 2022. Um, <laughs> the cool thing, though, was was that in that same year I had asked Michael to marry me so she was there for that I didn't do a crazy wedding I just said let's just go get married you know uh, where you go to just get it done quickly said. and my parents were there as well because I had told them I might need witnesses at this point in time, witnesses are no longer actually really required anymore. But I said, it'd still be nice to have you there. So yeah, that, that was a plus to have all of them there to quickly celebrate our wedding with us. But yeah, she died in my arms. And I had texted Michael right away. And I told my mom and dad right away, so they rushed over. They said goodbye to her little body, and I kept a hold of her. I had to wait until Michael got off work to take her to where they can get her cremated. Same as what we did with Rock. So, yeah. 
again. Rock and Roxy were my whole world. My mom was my whole world. And I would tell all of them. I didn't know what I was going to do without them. And I still don't know what I'm going to do. Because I lived for them. And I don't have any of them anymore. 